Hey, what's up guys? Fabio here once again and I want to welcome everybody back to another video and today we are continuing on with the 31 days of Fabooween and we are continuing on with some paid requests. Uh, the next three that will be coming up are from Clarson. He sent in the request for the physical media video which I had a lot of fun doing that you guys all seem to enjoy it so I thank you once again for the paid requests and I thank you guys for all of your comments and I'm glad that you guys like that one uh, but he did want me to do three Scooby-Doo movies yes I was pretty excited about this um, number one he did say that you know um, since Halloween was coming up since October was coming up he wanted to uh, throw a couple requests in for some Scooby-Doo stuff and I was like cool I'm a big Scooby-Doo fan I love Scooby-Doo everybody loves Scooby-Doo how could you not like Scooby-Doo and he wanted me to review uh, three of the direct-to-video animated movies that they did uh, I believe it was last year last year I reviewed Scooby-Doo on um, Zombie, huh? Scooby Doo on Zombie Island. I don't think I did that for October. I think I did that in the summer. Um, but he wanted me to review, which is actually chronologically the next three. So this one is for Scooby Doo and the Witch's Ghost, which is the second of the direct to video Scooby Doo movies. And then after this, he wanted me to review. Now, I always get confused by the order of these because. Number one, there is a million of these movies. <laughs> there is a million of these Scooby-Doo directed video movies. But I think uh, The Alien Invaders is the next one. Yeah, Alien Invaders and then The Cyber Chase. So those will be the next two. And I, again, I was pretty excited about this. It's always good to talk about Scooby-Doo. Um, and to kind of jump back in time a little bit here and talk about the the earlier direct -to video movies is always good with me as well. So Scooby-Doo and the Witch's Ghost is what we're going to be talking about in this video. And I did like this movie. I like Zombie Island more because Zombie Island was actually more scarier and I think it was a little more serious when they started doing more of these they toned it down which i don't think was a good to be perfectly honest i don't think was a good idea um i get why they did it because parents complained that zombie island was too scary i didn't complain when i was a kid and i watched zombie island i wanted more of that i wanted more of that type of scooby-doo but because people complained they had to tone it down but i do like this I had a lot of fun with this movie. Uh, Tim Curry is in it. How could you go wrong with Tim Curry as the villain? Spoiler alert. Uh, I mean, you kind of probably figured that out. But this was a good one. This was a good follow-up. Again, I don't like it as much as Zombie Island because they toned it down, which I don't think was a good idea. But it was fun. It was, a, it was another good little Scooby-Doo movie. Can't complain. But before we jump into the rest of the video here, as always, you all know what's coming. If anyone else would like to help contribute to the channel by sending in a paid request such as this, you may do so down below in the description box. There is a link to my PayPal account. No amount is too big. No amount is too small. It does not have to be just a movie review. It could be a TV series, a cartoon comic book, video game, music, random thoughts, rants, streams, commentaries, and anything in between. That's what the paid request is set up for. So again, if any of you are interested, go ahead, send it in, and I will get to it as soon as I possibly can. For those of you that have sent them in before, thank you. I greatly appreciate it. It means you guys actually care about what I say and do here on the channel, and you want to see me try some different things. It does motivate me to keep wanting to make videos, so it's a win-win for everybody. You guys get more of the type of videos that you want to see me cover here on the channel. I keep making them, 
and at the end of the day, everybody goes home happy, just like they used to say at Blockbuster. So, thank you. And again, um, throughout the month of October, if anyone would like to send in a non-horror, non-spooky paid request, you're more than welcome to. I, I actually got one earlier today for a non-horror, and I will cover that. I will I will pepper that in, so to speak, amongst all the other of the stuff. That's perfectly fine. I have no problem with that. And again, the other 11 months out of the year, if anyone wants to request horror or whatever, you're more than welcome to. That does not pertain to just October. Um, again, it's pretty open-ended with the paid requests, so it's what you guys would like to see. Just, you know, don't make me like review Debbie Does Dallas or whatever, you know. Who, who wants to hear me complain about that? I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> but Scooby-Doo and the Witch's Ghost. Now, like I said, I know I, I, I just said it, but when Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island came out, they were not expecting it to be successful. They were thinking, well, you know, there's a fan base. You know, we have the reruns. Like, Scooby-Doo is always going to be there. Scooby-Doo is not going to go away. But they were not expecting it to be as big as it was. It was a very successful movie. It sold very well. And naturally, when you make a bunch of money and it's successful, you want to do more. And I'm okay with that. But I think that the problem was that they toned it down. I think one of the big reasons why people love Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island, myself included, now that uh, all of us are older, is that it was a little more serious, it was a little more scary, it was darker, it dealt with real supernatural stuff, not just this guy's in a mask. So I think that that's one of the reasons why 25 years later, which is scary to think that that movie came out 25 years ago, pun intended, um, that's why people still love that. I, For the life of me, I do not understand why that never got a Blu-ray release, and neither did this one. Um, for whatever stupid reason. It is laziness. It is complacency on, on Warner Brothers' part. They could make money if they put it out on Blu-ray because a lot of people would want to buy it. Um, there is HD prints. There is HD versions of Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island and this movie out there. So there's no reason why you can't stick it on a Blu-ray and you know people would buy it. But... One of the complaints that they had was a lot of parents thought it was too scary. A lot of parents thought it was too dark and too serious. So all the subsequent movies that have come out, starting with this one till now, because they keep making these, which, you know, I'm okay with. I don't have a problem with them making these Scooby-Doo directed video movies. Number one, they're cheap and they're easy to make. And number two, they pr most of them have probably been very successful. I've lost count. Most of these I have not seen. The majority of them I have not seen. Um, other than Zombie Island, I think the only one that I ever saw was the Kiss one. Which I did like. I did like the, the Scooby-Doo Kiss movie. Because I don't think I've ever seen this one, to be honest. But I think that they should have stuck with them being more serious, them being more darker them being a little more scarier. Um, when you do a movie and when you put it on network television, it's two completely different things. I mean, now, God only knows what the hell they show on television. Uh, they, they're, they're probably one step away from showing cum shots on TV. And I know that, why would you say that in a Scooby-Doo video? Well, you got, you, you know who the audience is watching these videos. And I don't think the word cum shot is, is offensive, so you understand the analogy I'm trying to make anyway um, but yeah I think that these movies in my opinion should have stuck with that zombie island formula where it is taken a little more seriously it is okay now we can kind of go in more of a direction that we think would work and unfortunately they didn't do that now I'm not saying that this movie was bad I liked it I laughed I had fun I enjoyed this. I really liked the animation because the animation was done by the same company that did the previous movie, and then I think they did the next two. They did the first four, and then I think they went in-house because it was cheaper. And it was a company in Japan, actually. 
I think it was the same people that did SWAT Cats. If I'm not mistaken, I think it was the same studio that worked on that show, which I love, and I'd love to see a Blu-ray of that. Is it going to happen? Probably not, but a guy can dream, can he? Um, but I will, I will move away from that. But I do, I do think, and I know that a lot of people would agree with me, that they should have stuck with making them a little more scary, a little more serious, a little more darker. Um, because if you really think about it, by the time that Zombie Island came out, the original Scooby-Doo fans, like my parents' generation, they were already in their 30s. They were already adults. So you didn't think that maybe the, the original fans from back in the day would want to see maybe a little bit of a scarier, a little bit of a darker, more serious Scooby-Doo? I mean, again, I know we always talk about this. Why can't you have a version for kids and a version for adults, especially for something like Scooby-Doo? You can have the kids version where it's a guy in a mask and it's goofy and it's funny and then why can't you have a little bit more edgy, little darker, takes a little more serious version for the adults like myself. Why can't you do that? Now, again, like I said, I have not seen the majority of these movies so I can't comment on every single one of them. But in, from the way that I see it, it kind of went back to the Scooby-Doo formula for most of them. Because even the Kiss one, I like the Kiss one, but it was nothing like Zombie Island. It, it wasn't in that serious, you know. I know they did a bunch with WWE. They did like a Flintstones one. I do, I do really want to watch the one with Courage the Cowardly Dog because I love that cartoon as well. I would like to check that out maybe, maybe this year, maybe a little bit down the road. But anyway, I'll wrap that up. It's just a little. Uh, not really a complaint, but it's just kind of like a little bit of a head scratcher. Like, why would you not? Why would you not do that? Why would you not have a separate set of movies for for the for the older Scooby Doo fan, where it is a little more serious? I'm, and I'm not saying it's got to be rated R and titties and blood and guts and, and that that does that's not going to work with Scooby Doo. You know, we all know that, which is why that. I'd love to see the the R rated cut of the live action movie, but it's never going to come out just for curiosity but anyway but this was fun um again it, it it does build off of zombie island they do reference zombie island in the movie which was nice I, I did like that but it is kind of more in that vein but not as dark and as serious as that movie was not as scary as that movie was they definitely lightened up and i was reading that yeah because the the same team worked on this one and they said that because they didn't think that Zombie Island was going to do anything they didn't think it was going to go anywhere they were able to pretty much do what they wanted and then they said all the subsequent movies they had to tone it down and, and the, the suits and the, the powers that be were you know more in control of, of what could go in the movie and, and such and they said they hated it they said it was like why like why can't we do it this way? So there you go. But the plot is Scooby and the gang team up with a writer who is based on basically Stephen King um, before Stephen King lost his goddamn mind back in the 90s when everybody was still normal. And he's voiced by Tim Curry, which was it's always, you know, always good to have Tim Curry in your movie or your TV show or whatever. Uh, Tim Curry is definitely a class act. Um, it's terrible what happened to him. It's terrible that he had a stroke and uh, now he's wheelchair bound and he can't, unfortunately, he can't really communicate anymore. It does suck because Tim Curry was just an amazing, act, still an amazing actor. Always loved to see him. And again, if he was in something, it was a little more classy. It was a little more special. Even like Loaded Weapon 1, the fact that he's in that movie makes it even better, in my opinion, which is another great parody film that is celebrating 30 years, which is fantastic, in my opinion. But anyway, so Tim Curry voices this Stephen King-like character, and they go to his hometown in New England for this kind of like 
fall festival where there is reports of a ghost there, the witch's ghost, so to speak. There was this lady back in the day that was a Wicca that helped people and they thought she was a witch and they killed her. And they don't explicitly say that, but it is heavily implied because, again, it's a kid's movie. And Scooby and the gang go to investigate because there have been reports of the ghost roaming around. And a little bit of a subplot, there is a all-female rock band called the Hex Girls, which I know they're in some of the later movies. They're in some of the other, Scoob like the newer Scooby-Doo TV shows, which, to be honest, I'm not familiar with any of those. Um, what's new Scooby-Doo? I have all that somewhere in here, but that is really the extent of the of the newer and that shows 20 years old so yeah because uh, I do remember when that one came on it was like the first brand new Scooby-Doo show in years which was which was cool um, Kiss was in that one too before they were in the movie which I liked that episode anyway um, so there's a little bit of a subplot with the Hex Girls which is this all female rock band that you think it might be them they are the red herring it's not them uh, they unravel the mystery, so to speak. There is a fake ghost that the town was using to kind of drum up interest and drum up tourism, but then they find out that the real witch's ghost is there and that Tim Curry's character is trying to bring her back and, of course, they have to stop her before it's too late. And that's the plot in a nutshell. Again, it is Scooby-Doo. No matter what version... No matter if it's a movie or a show, it's always going to have that formula. That's why it's been on for over 50 years. That's why Scooby-Doo has not really stopped. Because the, the formula works. Um, you, you know what you're getting into with Scooby-Doo. You know what you're watching with a Scooby-Doo movie, show, it doesn't matter. You, you know what you're getting yourself into. And that's why people keep coming back. Um, because it does not get old. But this one was fun. Um, I like, I really like the story, how they go to like this little New England town and it, like Salem, Massachusetts. It's obviously based on that. Um, I really like that Tim Curry's in it. I really liked his character. Again, I know that Tim Curry came back, but as a different character for one of the later, I think one of the later movies he's in. So that's cool that they brought him back. Um, I like the Hex Girls. Again, they're featured in some of the other Scooby-Doo stuff, which is cool. I really like the animation. I thought that the animation was top-notch. Like I said, it was. it's the same group. It's the same company that did Zombie Island, and I think they did the next two movies as well. And then after that, I think they went in-house because it was cheaper can't say anything about quality but it is cheaper I will say that um, I do like that it was the typical thing of it was the you know someone else and then it was real I do like that that was fun there's a lot of good little moments like Scooby and Shaggy going into this restaurant and eating two of everything and the guy having to go out and get more which I thought was funny the, a lot of the gags are fun, especially the beginning when they're in a museum trying to stop these two guys, and Scooby and Shaggy are dressed up like cavemen, and, and Scooby's a saber-toothed tiger. Like, that was a really cool visual to see. Um, Scooby and Shaggy at the end dress up like a pilgrim, and they have to fight like a giant turkey, which was fun, and then, like, the pumpkins come alive, and, like... It, it is your, your typical Scooby-Doo stuff in here, which is, again, why over 50 years Scooby-Doo is still love now fuck Velma that show sucked fuck the woke shit I'm not I don't again I'm pretty sure from what I've heard the movies don't go into that it was just Velma because for whatever stupid fucking reason these uh, retards excuse me um, thought that it was a good idea that you know Velma should get her own show and Velma should be Indian for whatever reason and be a lesbian and all this other stupid shit that nobody fucking cares about because nobody watched it but yet they're making a season two because that makes sense but just leave Scooby-Doo alone you, you stupid fucks leave it for the kids 
the love of God. But yeah, there's a lot of cool sight gags and, and a lot of fun. Like there's another gag where Scooby and Tra Shaggy dress up as a boy and a girl, and it looks like they're making out, but they're not to follow one of the the villains, so to speak. The mayor was a lot of fun. The mayor was clearly based on the mayor from Jaws, which is an all-time favorite, an all-time classic. Can't go wrong with Jaws. Um, so that was a lot of fun. Again, there is a really good voice cast. Not only do you get Tim Curry, but you get Billy West. Billy West does uh, Scooby. No, he does Shaggy. And then uh, Scott Innes. This was, I think, the first time. No. Yeah, Scott Innes, I think this was the first time he did Scooby, and then he did Scooby for a while. Uh, Frank Welker comes back as Fred. He was the only original member to come back because his voice didn't change, which was cool. Um, Jennifer Hale is in it. Uh, Jennifer Hale is a big voice actress. I know her mainly because she was Black Cat on the 90s Spider-Man cartoon, but she's been in everything. Just look her up. Uh, Peter Renaday, none other than Master Splinter himself from the 80s Ninja Turtles cartoon, uh, is one of the characters, which is a lot of fun. Really good voice cast. Um, it cuts at a really good pace. It's only an hour and six... I mean, and with credits, it's an hour and six minutes. Without credits, it's like maybe a little bit more than an hour. So it cuts at a really good pace. Um, a lot, I think another problem is a lot of these, not just Scooby-Doo, but a lot of these animated movies tend to be over long, especially like the theatrical movies and the shit from Disney and all that. But this one cuts at a good pace. Now, I know it was straight to video, but it doesn't matter. But yeah, at the end of the day, I had fun with this. I really liked it. It was more Scooby-Doo fun. Again, I just wish that they would have kept it more serious. They would have kept it in the same tone as Zombie Island. Um, again, there is this. There is no Blu-ray, but again, like I said, there is HD versions out there. I've seen them. Now, the weird thing is, I think the only one out of the early Scooby-Doo movies to get a Blu-ray was The Cyber Chase, which is not the next one. The next one's Alien Invaders. And then Cyber Chase also had a PlayStation game, if I'm not mistaken. But I do remember when this one came out. I remember seeing it at the video store and such back in the day. I definitely uh, will be picking this up, at least on VHS. Um, I'm kind of holding out. Like Zombie Island, I have on VHS. I actually have my grandmother's copy that I kept when she passed away. But I'm kind of holding out that maybe somebody at Warner Brothers will get their head out of their ass. Like, hell, even if it's on a Warner Archive release, I at this point, I don't give a shit. But can we at least get Zombie Island on Blu-ray and this one? It's not complicated. It's really not. But I do like this movie. I definitely will be picking it up. I definitely will get more views, more, more chances to watch this in here. Because it's fun. And when I watch Scooby-Doo, I want to have fun. Because that's how it's supposed to be. We know the formula. We all know how it works. And that's why people love it. So I can't complain. But anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed my review of Scooby-Doo and the Witch's Ghost. Next up, the second of the three movies that I will be talking about is Scooby-Doo and the Alien Invaders. So until then... As always, thank you guys for watching. Take care, and we'll talk to you later. See you.